Discover the location of the three secret crochet patterns, decipher the mysterious contents, and with the assistance of cutting edge technology, determine which would feature on the Skein Spider YouTube channel. This was my mission. A mission fraught with such grave perils. I can see you. That despite my obvious skill in the arts of stealth and espionage, I would ultimately fail. And that means I'm going to have to try and crochet and assemble an entire Amigurumi project using a bare bones pattern devoid of any and all identifying details. How hard could that be? Welcome back to the channel if you've been here before and hello if you're new. Today's video is a bit of a departure from our regular content. You might have picked that up from the intro. First and foremost, this video is actually a collaboration with fellow YouTube crocheter Complicated Knots. She has a variety of amazing patterns over on her channel, so when you're done here, make sure you head on over to her channel, A, to watch her part of this collaboration, and B, to do all that good YouTube stuff. Like, comment, subscribe, you guys know the drill. As for how this works, basically Complicated Knots and I are each in possession of three patterns. I sent her three of mine, and I have three of hers. Those were actually handpicked from her channel by my sister who was helping me out in this video. What we're going to have to do is attempt to crochet and then construct them without any prior knowledge of what it is we're actually making. Originally, I asked my sister for help on this because I thought it would be pretty amusing for someone who does not crochet and has not ever crocheted to attempt to explain the assembly process. But when she actually sent me the patterns that she'd chosen, this is what I got. Hang on, I'm just zooming in here. Look at this shit. Zero out of 10 for effort. No, actually I'll give her a two out of 10. It did make me laugh. <laughs> so I was right in that it was amusing, just not for the reason that I expected. What I need to do now is choose which pattern that I want to crochet. I have three of them and right away, I think I can eliminate one. I'm about 95% certain that mystery pattern number one is a spider. I know Complicated Knots has a spider pattern over on her channel because it's been on my two crochet list for about a year now and I'm pretty sure that this is it. I mean it has eight limbs and a couple of other pieces that I'm pretty sure are the head and the body. My spidey senses are tingling. No wait, my skein spidey senses are tingling. Down. It's right there. It was right there. And despite what my poor attempts at comedy in the intro may have led you to believe, I don't actually want to know what I'm crocheting beforehand because that would just ruin the fun. So that means that pattern number one is out. With pattern number one out of the running, that means my choices are now between pattern number two and pattern number three. Pattern number three intrigues me, but it has a lot more parts than pattern number two. And while that could be a nice challenge, it may be a little bit too much of a challenge without assembly instructions. So at this point, I am going to go with pattern number two. Oh, it's hard work making all these decisions. Before I actually start crocheting, what I want to do is attempt to sketch out the approximate shape of all the individual parts that I'll need to crochet. And then using those, try and guesstimate what this pattern is actually supposed to be. So guys, gals, non-binary pals, if you will join me over at my table, we can begin. Okay, change of plans. We're not actually going over to the table. Instead, I'll have you join me at my tablet and we're going to do this digitally rather than with the sketchbook, just because I think it's a bit easier. I was going to be really meticulous about this, do it with some graph paper, but then I thought, nah, this is easier. Okay, so what I'm going to do is attempt to sketch out each individual part that I need to make. And then using those, try and guess what this pattern is actually supposed to be. So we're going to start with part A. I've chosen to crochet this pattern in shades of blue because I haven't a clue what colors the pattern actually calls for. And when in doubt, I go blue. I don't know if you guys know this about me because I've been pretty subtle about it, but blue is in fact my favorite color. And that's the last part. And my terrible drawings haven't really <laughs> illuminated what this is supposed to be, but I'm going to try and guess. So part A, I reckon that might be a limb, so either an arm or a leg. Okay, so part A could probably be an arm slash leg. 
but the same could go for part B. But I think looking at my notes, or looking at the pattern rather, part B, I only need to make one of. So usually with arms and legs, you tend to make two. So that might be some other part of tail maybe. Um, let, let's get a tail. Tail. Part C, because it is, it seems to be like a fairly round piece, I'm guessing that's the head. We'll just put a head as our guess, head. Part D, I don't know. I thought they might be ears, but then I thought part G could be ears too. Hmm. You know what? I'll put ears for my guess, some like little fluffy ears, like a little dog, maybe. So I'll put ears for my guess there. Part E is worked in rows rather than rounds, so it's a flat piece. And generally with patterns, I find the flat pieces are either some sort of like back or stomach patch. I'm just going to write patch, and then that could be for either the back of the piece, whatever it is, or its belly, sort of like an underbelly piece. Part F. It kind of looks like a foot as I've drawn it here. But again, I'm only making one, so I don't think it's a limb. And because I've already labeled part C as the head, I'm guessing that means part F is going to be the body. So I'm going to put body down as my guess. Yeah, we'll leave it at that. We'll, have, we'll leave it as body. And part G, they, I thought they could be ears too, but I've put ears down as my part D guess. But because part G is a triangle shape, I thought maybe they're like some sort of decorative spines, like ridges across the back or horns maybe. So that's going to be my guess. I'm going to put horns slash spines. Horns slash spines and now after having done all that I'm no closer to guessing what it could be than I was before you know what I'll have a bit of a think about it and then as I actually crochet the pieces so I can see them in 3d IRL I'll continue to think about it and then try and guess what it'll be as I go along that might be the plan because I have no idea at this point all I know that it has body parts and that's not particularly helpful. On to the crochet. Alrighty, we're starting off with part A, but I don't actually know what yarn weight and hook size I'm supposed to be using because it doesn't say in the pattern. And for that reason, I'm just going to stick with my usual 3.5 millimeter hook and eight ply yarn. As I said before, I'll be making this in blue and I'm going to start off part A with my darker blue. And part A begins with six single crochet in a magic circle. And six. And then for the rest of this piece, we're just going to do six single crochet for each round. But after round five, I'm going to change color to my medium blue. Alrighty, I'm going to leave a tail for sewing. And after that, I'm going to need to make a second one of part A. Magic. After I finished part A, I'm going to go on and crochet part B. Now part B says to begin in your main color, which is this blue for me. And again, we're starting off with six single crochet in a magic circle. And then for this part, we're increasing out by three, doing some rounds of single crochet. And then later in the part, we're swapping to the lighter color. So I'll have my light blue on hand. Okay, on to round two. Okay. 
I'm just about to make part C, but there is no indication of what color I should make this in. A plus work by my sister again. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make it in my medium blue because that seems to be from at least the two pieces or the three pieces I've made so far. That seems to be like the main color. And my guess for part C was that it was the head. And I'm going to go out on a limb here and crochet it in my medium blue. I've just finished round 14 and the instructions after that are just add eyes and stuffing. No other instructions, just add eyes and stuffing. So I'm guessing that this is a head. I'm more confident in that assessment at the moment. And I actually think it's worked from the bottom up. I thought I started at the top, but I reckon I actually started at the bottom because I think this center point here might be a nose and these two bits on the outside might be cheeks. And if I'm going to add the eyes, I think I'm going to add them here. Here ish. Um, no size listed for the eyes, so I'm just going to grab some 12 millimeter eyes. Mm, yep, that'll do. And the backs. And I'm going to put those. We'll start closer to the two edge points, and then if I need to, I'll start moving my eyes in and I'll see which spot looks best. Yeah, I think that might be a bit too spaced out, so I'm going to move these in. Let's go one stitch across. And that might be okay, especially after we add some stuffing, that's going to push them out a little bit further too. Yep, we'll leave them there and I'll pop the backs on. And then I just need to crochet a little bit more, add some stuffing and finish off. Now I'm going to make part D or the first piece of part D because part D needs two pieces made. I think these guys might be ears, but I'm not 100% convinced of that. So we're going to begin by putting a six single crochet in a magic circle. And then the rest of this piece, rounds two through to five, are just six single crochet. And now that that's finished, I'm going to have to make a second one. The next piece I need to make is part E, and that is the piece that's worked in rows rather than rounds. And I don't know what color to make this one in either, but I've chosen to do it in my light color because I think it's some sort of patch, whether it's going on the back of the piece or the belly of the piece or the front of the piece, wherever. And I was going to use, because I used the medium blue as my main colour, I was going to use either the dark or the light blue, but because I've used the dark blue in other pieces, I'm going to use the light blue to make this whatever it is. And we're going to start off with a slip knot, and then we're going to chain seven. And all I'm going to do from this point is crochet back and forth for six single crochet for rounds two all the way through to 17. All right, I've just finished round, no, row. We're working in rows, row 17. And the final two rows, row 18 and 19, each have decreases. So let's start with row 18, which is a decrease. 
two single crochet and a decrease and then row 19 is chain and turn and two decreases and i'm done with this piece i think i need to leave a tail for sewing and now i can go on to make part f part f is the piece that i think may be the body and we're going to start that off with six single crochet in a magic circle as well if i can untwist my yarn there we go and then it looks like i need to increase out for a few rounds some rounds of single crochet and then a bit of decreasing so let's get on that Part G is the final piece I need to make and I'm going to be making these in my dark blue yarn as well because again I don't know what color I'm supposed to make them in but I'm not sure whether this part part G are the ears or if these parts are the ears so I figure if I do them in the same color it doesn't really matter which one ends up being the ears so I'm going to begin by putting six single crochet in a magic circle And then for the next few rounds, all I need to do is increase by two in each round until I reach a stitch count of 14. And now I'm going to have to make a second one of those. Easy. All my pieces are crocheted at this point and now looking at everything I think I was right on a couple of my guesses and I think I was a bit wrong on some of the others I originally thought this might be some sort of little dragon or something because I did think these were spines but looking at them now I don't think they are I reckon they might be ears instead of these pieces which I thought were the ears and looking at the head, as I was crocheting it, I thought, okay, it might be some sort of cat or dog. But given that it's kind of a little bit pointy, I think that rules out cats. Cats aren't really pointy. So I'm going with something in the canine, lupine, vulpine area of the animal kingdom. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to attempt to put this thing together and I'll probably try a couple of different configurations and just see what looks best and go with that. I started out by pinning a part D piece and a part G piece to either side of the head to try and figure out once and for all which one was actually the ear pattern. At first I went with part D and then after that I pinned the rest of the pieces together so they formed what I thought was a good amigurumi pose. Was it the correct one? Who bloody knows, but that's what I went with. My thought process was that the body piece, when held horizontally, resembled that of like a playful puppy. You know when they get down on their front legs and stick their little butts up in the air? <laughs> that's what it looked like to me. However, after I'd assembled all the other pieces, I still had those part G ones left over. What I ended up doing was replacing the part D pieces on the head with the part G pieces. So now I had pointy ears rather than fluffy ones. And then I took those part D pieces and positioned them towards the back of the belly to be the hind legs. With all the pieces of my little dog, wolf, fox, pup, cub, kit, <laughs> whatever it ends up being, all pinned together, all I had left to do now was sew them together. And I did that while crossing my fingers, metaphorically, and hoping that I'd gotten them all in the correct position. And how did I do? Well, we're about to find out. Time for the big reveal. Future editing me, drum roll if you please. Oh, 
I'm not even close. <laughs> but you know what? Even though it doesn't look like it is supposed to look, I still think it's pretty damn cute. And it is actually supposed to be a fox, so I know that now. I was close, I guessed dog, wolf, fox, so I was at least in the ballpark. And I think my weird little fox will look very good up on my amigurumi shelf. So the fox may have been a miss in terms of assembly, but you know what? I still love it. I love his cute little face and weird little body. <laughs> The plan for this video was originally supposed to be me going through one of Complicated Knot's patterns thoroughly and then with the other two I was going to do a short montage of me both guessing, making and then assembling them. But in the end I just didn't have the spoons to crochet both of those. I did however end up crocheting mystery pattern number one which I was right about. It was a spider and look how adorable this little face is. It's so cute. And I'm so glad I got the opportunity to make it. I can cross that off my to-do list now. The third pattern I wasn't able to get around to at all, unfortunately. And what I was going to do was reveal what it was supposed to be in this video, or in this outro part at least. But I think it might be a bit more fun if I leave it as a mystery. And what I'll do is I'll put the link down in the description. So you can go and check out mystery pattern number three for yourselves to see what it is. Very much like the other two, it is exceptionally cute and I'm pretty bummed I didn't get the chance to make it. There are also going to be links to Complicated Knots channel as well as all three of the patterns down in the description. So please go check out her channel, she is awesome, her patterns are amazing and you really should be subscribed if you aren't already. I just want to finish this video off by saying a huge thank you to Complicated Knots for working with me on this collaboration. It has been a blast. Still a bit bummed that I didn't get to do the other two patterns on camera, but who knows, maybe we can revisit this at some point in the future, maybe. And I also want to thank all of you for watching as well. I hope you enjoyed this video. Consider subscribing if you haven't already and make sure you head on over to Complicated Knots channel to subscribe to her as well. I will be back next week with a new video. I will see you all then. Say it again. <laughs> I can see you. <laughs> you can't. <laughs> <laughs> Was that sassy enough? <laughs>